Hey everyone, welcome. Really excited to have James Wu here, partner of M12 Venture Fund from Microsoft and also the newest board observer for Space and Time. Really excited to have you. Appreciate you coming, James, and look forward to this discussion. Thank you, Nate. Thanks for the intro. So, James, just a quick question for you is, is what's M12 focused on? What are you investing in today and what's of interest as you move forward in Web3 and today yeah. in applications in general? Cool. So M12 is Microsoft's record fund, obviously. So we are very much focused on investing in tool sets, infrastructure layer that empowers developers to build more reliably, securely, interoperably. I'm probably missing another adjective there, but um, certainly we're looking for infrastructure plays. So less so of NFTs, things that are more user centric. Um, we like to invest in things that run in the background. So space and time really stood out to us because, you know, we can go into more detail, but uh, you know, it is the data layer and the data mesh that we, we've seen um, play out in the Web2 world several, several times. And we see that space and time has a strong data gravity that attracts a lot of users, a lot of dApps that can build on top. Where do you think the application development is going? You, you have a lot of applications that are being, in, being built in Azure. You're seeing a lot of applications coming from a decentralized perspective within Web3. Uh, how do you think about the, the world of on and off-chain data and the, the, the application development of the future? Yeah, so I'm a true believer of Web 2.5. Uh, I believe that Web 2 has to work with Web 3 and there's a natural transition from Web 2 world to Web 3. And space and time fits in that mold because yes, there is chain, there's on-chain data today, but the majority of data is still off-chain. So how do you merge those data insights together in real time? That's still a missing piece within the Web 3 arena. And I think space and time is just very well positioned to capture that market opportunity. Yeah, you think of all the customers out there that are running on Azure and have massive amounts of data and have familiar SQL tools, for example, if we're talking about space and time, but just familiar tools in general and, and being able to bridge that on, on chain is, is something that's, that's really important. I know it's mm -hmm. something that we're focused on as well. Um, where do you think that, that the market is going from, from M12's perspective on, on, on the, the, the use of data and privacy? So there's a lot of questions around, around data privacy on-chain data, off-chain data, what are, should be the open data standards of, of, of privacy of data? Yeah, I think that's the world of cryptography. I'm not a tech guy, but I can tell you that Microsoft is very much focused on how do we leverage cryptography to ensure privacy, to ensure that data, uh, not only consumers, but enterprises are being protected. Yeah. Uh, but actually, I would love to ask you a question. You know, you're building a Web3 native data warehouse. You know, why partner with Microsoft? What differentiates? the Microsoft ecosystem compared to some others? Yeah, no, I think about Web3 in general, right, to, to start out. And, and I think that uh, there's, there's amazing applications being developed. There's DeFi, gaming, enterprise applications being developed in a decentralized manner. And, um, and I think there's really two missing pieces. One is the ability to, to bridge on and off-chain data in a, in a familiar environment, mm -hmm. especially as we talked about all the enterprise applications out there that are looking for familiar tools to attach and connect to smart contracts in the blockchain. The second one is exactly what you said, cryptographic proofs, right? Having, having the ability uh, to not just trust data, but to actually have proof that the data hasn't been tampered with. And so from a space and time perspective, we address this through user-operated nodes, right? a community of nodes, and Azure is going to be a huge part of our community as we build out the ecosystem of distributed sure. uh, network. And the, the second one is, is as we talked about, the, 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 the proof of SQL, right? The ability to connect off-chain data to on-chain smart contracts. And our excitement with Microsoft is, look, you've been automating business logic for decades. I mean, the world, as we know it from an analytics perspective, runs on SQL. The mass majority of, of the world runs with Microsoft products. Mm -hmm. And uh, the need to bridge that gap and, and have a solution for them to be able to interact with blockchain data is really exciting for us. So it was a, it was a, it was a partnership that we were really excited yeah. about and we, we appreciate your support. Well, uh, we're, we're just as, as, as excited to be a fair, uh, you know, as we think about how to invest, we're always looking for Horizon 2 and Horizon 3 investments. And sometimes those are the non-obvious non investments. But I think in, this, in the case of space and time, it was fairly obvious that there's a huge gap between what is on-chain and what is off-chain and how do you offload some of the computations off-chain uh, nodes and whatnot. So Microsoft and M12 is very excited to be part of the journey. What would you say to people that would say, why is Microsoft investing in a decentralized network when they have kind of a massive cloud solution provider mm -hmm. for, for the ecosystem, right? Because sometimes yeah. you know, people think that that is, that, is, that is kind of differing points of, of go-to-market. 
Yeah, I think the, the question of centralization and decentralization is an interesting one. I think why we invested is it's enterprise solution, right? We look across some of the solutions of Web3, they're often consumer facing, and it's very rare to find founders that have been Web2 that have built enterprise grade databases and enterprise grade infrastructure. So we don't necessarily see it as, hey, this is the decentralization play, but this is a step forward towards a new shift in paradigm. And, uh, you know, you guys have done before, and that's why we're so excited about backing you and Scott. Yeah, no, we appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so as m new portfolio company, obviously Microsoft really cares about data privacy and data protection. How do you, as space and time, ensure that user data is being protected? Yeah, no, absolutely. So we're building a decentralized data warehouse. So first of all, it's being protected because there's no central entity that controls all the data. We have user-operated nodes, and anyone can participate in the network from a decentralization perspective. Mm -hmm. The second one is we have cryptographic proofs. So we require a proof when queries are being and analytics are being delivered to smart contracts to ensure that nobody is tampering with the data. Decentralization is all about tamper proof. Obviously centralization, there's, there's risk to being tampered with. Mm -hmm. the, the other issue though is, is that uh, not all data can be open source. You can't give all data out to everyone. And so encryption and end-to-end -end encryption is really important to have choice of encryption of data. Space and time operates with the same level of end-to-end -end data encryption that we have uh, in the banking systems in the world today, right? So users that are operating and working with space and time, they have the ability to have open source data ecosystem, but they also have the assurity and the functionality to have end-to-end -end encryption to ensure that they, their data is private. Um, obviously, when it comes to proofs, the question is, is how do you prove something without divulging all the information around it. And that's why cryptography exists and that's why it's so exciting. And that is why exciting. we're proof of SQL. That's exciting because now you're not requiring all central databases to then fork over and to put all their data on chain, but you're keeping it in a centralized uh, system, but still providing the proof that is absolutely tamper proof. Absolutely. And um, if, you, if you think about proof of SQL, where we're headed on a roadmap is making that a product. So although you may not decide to run within a decentralized data warehouse like space and time, you may want to continue to operate, for example, in central databases, for example, in Azure. But then the question is, is as we're running these uh, you know, uh, analytics within a database, how do we still ensure that if we want to connect data to a smart contract that is trustless? And so proof of SQL roadmap item is that we're building it to turn any centralized data source into a trustless analytic feed directly to a smart contract to open up the world of analytics. And that's what we talk about, garbage in, garbage out. If data has been tampered with from the source, then all of a sudden all your contracts, all your business logic is tampered with. Absolutely. No, absolutely. One of the great things about blockchain is, is all that data is there. So we, we index and we bring in all the blockchain data and we have a consensus mechanism to ensure that when data comes into space and time and is readily available in relational data stores, that it's, 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 a, it's a trusted and a trustless uh, environment. To your point, bringing data from off-chain, we need to make sure that you know, you're bringing data that you can trust and is accurate. But once it's in space and time, the actual analytics and calculation and mathematics has cryptographic proof that something can't be tampered with. And if anything changes, you'll know about it and it'll fail to deliver it to a smart contract. Got it. Well, I'd like to shift the topic a little bit and talk about, hey, when everyone thinks, thinks about startups or talks about startups, they talk about rocket ships, they talk about linear growth or exponential growth, but that's not necessarily the case. Like, what, what does success look like for you in five years, both for yourself and also space and time as a team? Yeah, no, that's a great question. As I think about it, you know, in the short term, we want to make sure that we can provide in a data infrastructure for applications to be built, specifically mm -hmm. in the Web3 community, whether you're building gaming, whether you're building DeFi, whether you're building enterprise applications, we want you to have a place to build in a decentralized environment with trusted analytics. In five years from now, though, we see a world where, where the complexities, as you kind of mentioned, Web 2.5, we see the complexities of on and off-chain data you know, merging together an environment where you're going to have some things running in a decentralized network, something running in a centralized network, but the data interacting through automation of smart contracts needs to be trustless mm -hmm. or trust minimized at a minimum. So, so we see space and time as an integral part of enabling smart contracts to receive analytics from anyone that wants to partner with us and join and build with us to be able to directly connect their databases directly to smart contracts. Uh, independent of whether they're a decentralized database or a central database. Yeah.